Ever feel like you don't belong? Like you don't fit in with the people around you? Want to find yourself an identity that suits you? Then we have just the thing for you. Hey there, I'm James Crawford, and I'm here today to tell you that with the Consumer Society, you can be whoever you want to be. Perhaps you want to be a skater. You'll be needing a skateboard for a start. Don't forget some skate brand clothing. And a video camera will really help show what you can do. Maybe you see yourself as more of the gamer type. You'll want to buy our PlayStation 4. Of course you'll be needing some games to play on it. And you'll probably want to get one of our printed tees to round off the effect. If you want to be the musician of the group, you'll just love our guitars. Our amps. Our rock posters. And clothing with the bands you love on them. There really is no end to the options available to you, but make sure you get by them fast, because unless you purchase something that makes you somebody, you're nobody. You're nobody. You're nobody. You're nobody. You're nobody. These days it can seem like the most natural thing in the world to be surrounded by products. From the moment we step out of bed in the morning and have a shower, we make use of these items as we go about our day, without even really noticing. For each product we use, there are any number of different options available to us. So, for example, we get to choose a shower gel or shampoo that we feel is most suited to us. It feels like the normal way of things, how things should be. However, this consumer society only really emerged after World War II. No person who lived anywhere on Earth in all the thousands of years prior to the last 70 had anything like the amount of choice of what to buy as we do. A shovel was for digging and a pot was for cooking. Most decorative objects were reserved for the super wealthy, the emperors or the monarchy or the lords and ladies. On the surface at least, it's a wonderful thing to have all of these options and all of these things available to us. But we should also take a step back and try to understand what this change means for who we all are. Good, huh? Yes, for a treat instead of a treatment. Get a pack or get a carton of old gold cigarettes. Right now, this is Dennis James reminding you to keep smoking old gold cigarettes. Today we have got to a stage where not only do we have these options available to us, but it would be very hard not to buy them. In order to fit in with everyone around us, we are almost forced to buy different things to wear, different forms of transport, different places to live, and different things to decorate those places with. If you think about how much of what you do revolves around buying all these different things, you begin to realise how different the world is from only a short time ago. These differences affect us deeply, changing how we act, how we define ourselves, and ultimately who we are.
Unlike many other major shifts in society, the birth of the consumer society was less a conscious choice as an attempt to improve our collective lives, and more a consequence of decades of capitalism. Under capitalism, there is a need to constantly grow and expand. Unless more and more is being sold, and more and more money being made, the system crashes and people suffer. It therefore becomes necessary that everyone buys ever more things in order to sustain the system. For evidence of this, we need to look no further than the adverts which are omnipresent in our lives. Everywhere we look when we step out our doors, and all around our homes on our televisions and computers. It can be hard to differentiate a product when the real benefits may be as simple as quenching our thirst and tasting good. There can be so many other options available to us which do the same thing. Because of this, most adverts today don't just tell us about the uses and benefits of the thing they are selling. Instead, they show us a desirable lifestyle being enjoyed by people who bought the product. They play on our real need to feel happy and feel like we have our own special place in society to subconsciously create a false need for that product. The really astonishing thing is that we so often believe this. Just like tribal societies may have had a totem or shrine which they believed brought them favour with the gods, we almost seem to believe that these products are, an, are omnipotent. On some level, we think that buying them and displaying or consuming them will bring us the happiness and lifestyle promised in the adverts. The only difference is that while other societies have had a limited number of these objects and believed them to have spiritual power, we have ditched the spiritual aspect and only believe that we have to consume more and more of these things in order to keep us happy. Consumable objects have come to mean so much more than just what they function as. They have become symbols of a certain way of living that we feel are necessary in order to live in that way. It's rarely just a single object we are compelled to buy in order to have a certain lifestyle. Instead, we must buy things in sets if we want to take on a certain identity. We must buy a whole wardrobe of clothes which fit a certain style and decorate our, our houses or rooms in a way which is in keeping with that. We must spend money drinking in the right sorts of pubs or taking part in the right sorts of activities. This pulls us into spending even more. We see ourselves as free to be able to choose, but this is not completely true. The things we buy say something about us to the others around us. Each set of items we buy signifies our place within the consumer society, a kind of unspoken hierarchy with a huge variety of different subsections and ways of forming our idea of who we are. In order to fit into different sections of society, Different sets must be bought which come together to create a total meaning. Complete freedom is an illusion. We choose to purchase things as part of a complex web of social values and classifications, not as a lone, isolated individual. The whole system becomes its own unspoken language through which we speak to each other and the society speaks of itself. It could even be said that to some degree we have become just another functioning part of this system. Our lives are controlled by the false need to be constantly buying new things. That we form our identity through what we buy is a massive break from the past. Whereas personal identities used to be formed around religion, work or neighbourhood, all these types of identity are now largely subordinated to the identity created by what we buy. Of course this isn't necessarily worse than any of the old ways, but it does put pressure on us to earn the money to buy these things. We have to be able to buy them in order to have a sense of self-worth and our own place in society. 
These pressures are very real and significant. It is telling that now, at the height of human achievement, we are more anxiety-ridden, prone to depression, and worried about how other people see us than ever before. Forming our identities in this way also means they're transient. It's a disturbing thought that something as fundamental as who you are is manipulated, however subconsciously, by the adverts and fashions you're exposed to. So, if our way of life may not be as wonderful and free as it seems, how could we go about changing it? The problem with bringing about change is that it would require a vision of a better way of doing things, and the collective will of many of us working together. It is very hard for us to conceive of another way of life, because consumerism is so all-encompassing. Our very idea of progress is completely tied up with the creation of new objects and the continued accumulation of profit. It is hard to refocus upon people's actual happiness. Whereas in the past, identities formed around religion, neighborhood or work brought large groups together who could then fight for their interests. Our belief that we buy things as a lone individual means that the consumer stands relatively isolated, unconscious and alone. To an extent we are denied a feeling of a larger community and the idea of fighting for a common good. We are much more likely to feel apathetic than we have been before. feeling that change is so unlikely, it possibly isn't even worth the effort of trying to change it. Maybe this is because the consumer society has enough benefits that I don't mind the drawbacks. Maybe it's because our way of life is actually better than any of those that came before. Or maybe it's because, like all of us, I'm a child of consumption, and it isn't really possible for me to conceive of another way of living, or how this would ever happen. Fly, and I am the same friend.